What do you call a book with missing chapters, missing passages, missing verses, missing phrases, missing words, and countless changes? Well, the Arabic word for a book like that is Quran. What do you call scholars who tell you that a book with missing chapters, missing passages, missing verses, missing phrases, missing words, and countless changes has nevertheless been perfectly and miraculously preserved? You call them liars. Practically every Muslim you'll ever meet will tell you that the Quran has been perfectly preserved right down to the letter from the time it was revealed to Muhammad. What's interesting is that the further you go back in Islamic history, the more you find Muslims admitting that the Quran has changed. If you go all the way back to the companions of Muhammad, they had endless stories about how they failed miserably to preserve the Quran. Let's look at an example. In Sahih Muslim 2286, Muhammad's companion Abu Musa talks to the Quran reciters of Basra, a city in Iraq, and he tells them about two lost chapters of the Quran. Abu Harp ibn Abu al-Aswad reported on the authority of his father that Abu Musa al-Ashari sent for the reciters of Basra. They came to him, and they were 300 in number. They recited the Quran, and he said, you are the best among the inhabitants of Basra, for you are the reciters among them. So continue to recite it. But bear in mind that your reciting for a long time may not harden your hearts, as were hardened the hearts of those before you. We used to recite a surah which resembled in length and severity to surah bara'at. I have, however, forgotten it, with the exception of this which I remember out of it. If there were two valleys full of riches for the son of Adam, he would long for a third valley, and nothing would fill the stomach of the son of Adam but dust. And we used to recite a surah, which resembled one of the surahs of Musabihat, and I have forgotten it, but remember this much out of it. O oh, people who believe, why do you say that which you do not practice, which is similar to surah 61, verse 2 of the Quran, and that is recorded in your necks as a witness against you, and you would be asked about it on the day of resurrection, which is similar to Surah 17, verse 13 of the Quran. So Abu Musa, one of Muhammad's companions, who converted to Islam in Mecca and was later the governor of Basra, called in 300 Quran reciters. He basically tells them, I know how awful it is sitting around reciting the Quran. I know you're probably sick of it, because we got sick of it too, and we learned the Quran from Muhammad himself. But you have to keep reciting it anyway, otherwise you'll forget parts of it like we did. Notice, he says that Muhammad's companions forgot two chapters of the Quran because they hardened their hearts. But even though Muslims forgot these two chapters, Abu Musa still remembers a few things about them. He remembers that the first one was about as long as Surah Bara'at, which is Surah 9 of the Quran. Surah 9 contains 129 verses, so more than 100 verses were lost. This is where Muslims jump in and say, no, Abu Musa is just saying that he personally forgot some Quran chapters, not that they were lost from the Quran. Wrong. Wrong. You see, Abu Musa remembers a verse from this lost chapter. If there were two valleys full of riches for the son of Adam, he would long for a third valley, and nothing would fill the stomach of the son of Adam but dust. Now, Muslims, can you show us this verse in today's Quran? Of course you can't. The entire chapter was lost, because Muhammad's companions were too lazy to recite it. They hardened their hearts. But that's not all they forgot. There was another chapter which contained the words... O oh, people who believe, why do you say that which you do not practice, and that is recorded in your necks as a witness against you, and you would be asked about it on the day of resurrection? Now, you can find similar words elsewhere in the Quran, but not in the same chapter. So here again, an entire chapter is missing from the Quran. The chapters of Musabihat are significantly shorter, than Surah 9, but we can estimate the length of the lost chapter based on the other chapters of Musabihat. I'm guessing that this lost chapter contained somewhere in the area of 20 verses. 
So, if somewhere around 129 verses were lost when one chapter was forgotten, and another 20 or so verses were lost when another chapter was forgotten, that's about 150 more Quran verses that were in the Quran during the time of Muhammad, but aren't in the Quran today. I say about 150 more Quran verses because in a previous video, we read a passage from Ubay ibn Kab who said that more than 200 verses were lost from Surah 33 alone. This means that we're already up to more than 350 verses that are missing from a book that Muslims tell us has been perfectly preserved right down to the letter. And you can ask a thousand Muslims about this. You can ask a thousand Muslims, does it bother you that Muhammad's companions talked about hundreds of verses being lost from the Quran? Does this affect your belief in the perfect preservation of the Quran at all? Nope, doesn't bother us a bit. The Quran has been perfectly preserved right down to the letter. Muslims have been conditioned all their lives to accept whatever their leaders and apologists tell them, even if it completely contradicts what Muhammad's companions said. These same Muslims will tell us that their religion must be true because their book has been miraculously preserved. The foundation of Islamic apologetics is the preservation of the Quran and its complete, utter, total nonsense. What does this tell us about the religion? By the way, if you missed my video about 200 verses being lost from Surah 33, be sure to check it out. And even if you didn't miss it, go ahead and watch it again. It's free, and we all need to master this material. Myths don't go down easy.